In this video, we're going to introduce a new concept, and that's graphing square root inequalities. We have to remember that when we've graphed inequalities before, we always have to ask ourselves two questions. Am I using a dashed or solid line? And where am I going to shade? And so now we're dealing with the inequality y is greater than the square root of 3x plus 5. There's another new concept here, which is nice to address, is if we were to think of how we've done our square root functions in the past, we've always dealt with functions that fit the format y equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k. And if I look at this square root function, it's 3x plus 5. My x has a coefficient. And so I can't use this transformation setup when I'm graphing this function. I have to use something else. And this is where we have to understand how do we come up with that transformation setup. And the way we did it is what is the smallest possible value you can have inside of a radical, inside of a square root? And that is as soon as you get to the negatives, it's impossible to graph on the real coordinate plane. So you can't have a negative number in here. So that means that expression, 3x plus 5, the smallest it can possibly be is 0. So it has to be greater than or equal to 0. And so if I take a look, I solve for x. I would subtract 5 and then divide by a positive 3. So x is greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds. And that represents my x coordinate for my starting point, negative 5 thirds. And then from here, I'm going to graph. So I'm going to put this in my calculator as I've done before. I see the x value of my starting point, and I can always find the y from the calculator. The key is you need to realize is if this does not fit our transformation setup, which means if your x has a coefficient, you take the expression in the radical, set it to be greater than or equal to 0, and solve for x. So let's get our calculator out. We have here, and I'm just going to do the equation instead of the inequality, square root 3x plus 5. I can look at what the graph of the square root function, if it were an equation, would look like. I'm going to look at my table of values. Notice I have all of these decimals. And so if I take a look, negative 5 thirds is my starting point, which is between negative 2 and negative 1. And so if I look at all of my values, I see anything beyond negative 1, well, negative 5 thirds, you have negative 2, negative 3 are all going to be your errors. And so here, when I'm graphing, I'm just going to estimate these points from my graph. I'm not asked for the domain. I'm not asked for the range. I'm just asked to graph. And so at negative 5 thirds, our y value is going to be 0 because there's no vertical movement. So really, my starting point that I'm identifying is negative 5 thirds, 0, because the k value is 0 out here. And so negative 5 thirds is negative 1.67 approximately. So I'm going to plot that point. And then I'm just going to use my table of values as a way to approximate the locations. At 0, I'm at 2.23. So that's almost at 2 and a quarter. And so there's 1 and a quarter. Here's 2 and a quarter. At 3, I'm at 3.74. So at 1, 2, x equals 3. I'm at 3.74, which almost is 3 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to go about right here. And so I can now see how I would graph my nice curve. Question is, am I using a dashed or a solid line? And so since my inequality is greater than, I am using a dashed curve. And so I'm going to sketch with a dashed curve. And then we got to figure out, how am I going to shade? 
And remember, if you're not familiar with a general setup, in order to figure out where to shade, you have to use a test point of values. And so that is what we're going to do, is we're going to use a test point of values to figure out our shading. And so what's the easiest test point? And if our graph does not go through the point zero, zero, that's the easiest one to use. And so if I use the test point zero, zero, so y is zero, is greater than three times zero plus five. Three times zero is zero, so zero plus five is five. So is zero greater than the square root of five? Well, no. I mean, the square root of five, you know, is larger than the square root of four, which the square root of four is two. So this is going to be two point something. So is zero greater than two point something? No, it's false. And so that means this test point of zero, zero is not in the shaded region. So we're going to have to shade in the other region. Now, this is where we need to be careful. It gets a little tricky from here if you don't remember the idea of your starting point. You cannot go beyond negative five thirds on the x-axis. So when you are shading, you have to imagine that you have this vertical line, and I'm going to do it dashed, that you cannot go beyond to the left. Because if you're shading over here, you're representing points that are you know, negative four, negative three, but you know you can't go beyond negative five thirds. You know, when x is negative three, it says error. So nothing can be shaded over here. You only get to shade over in the region from this point into the right above. And so if it assists you when you're graphing, you might want to sketch a dash vertical line through your starting point with an inequality so you know not to shade to the left of that line. And so this is my shaded region for the inequality. That is the trick for square root inequalities is making sure you shade and be careful how you shade when it comes to going beyond your starting point. Let's see some examples in a standardized test problem. Which is the graph of y is greater than 2x plus 4? Well, first thing comes to mind is, are all of my choices dashed lines because of my inequality symbol? And yes, they are. Next thing that comes to my mind is, can I figure out what my starting point is? Well, since my x has a coefficient, I can't use the AHK technique of transformations. What I have to do is take the expression in the radical 2x plus 4, set it to be greater than or equal to 0. So 2x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Your starting point, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And so that means there's no way b is my choice because this is starting at positive 2 and I need to start at negative 2. So b is not the choice, neither is c. So now let's look at the difference between a and d. They both start at negative 2. They're both dashed. It's just the shading. So if I take a look, well, hey, 0, 0 is a good test point here. So let's use it. So I'm going to use the test point 0, 0. Is 0 greater than the square root of 2 times 0 plus 4? Well, that's 0 plus 4. So is 0 greater than the square root of 4? Is 0 greater than 2? No. And so that means this test point of 0, 0 is not in the shaded region. Well, here it is in the shaded region, and so D it's not, and so D is my answer. And so what's nice about this video is you learn how to graph square root inequalities, but you also learn there are going to be some examples, and it's not just for inequalities, it's also for equations, where your A, H, and K technique may not work. And those examples are where your X has a coefficient that's not 1. And what you do here is if you apply the basic definition that your square roots cannot have a negative value inside of it, which means they must be greater than or equal to 0, you'll get your domain, you'll get your starting point for your x-coordinate.